and you know a remarkable u turn took place in the world about which no one has cared to understand that in 1970s when japan began rising as an economic power the west was surprised because economic development economic progress is supposed to be the preserve of the west how could a uh, japan from asia an underdeveloped place a place which is condemned not to develop a buddhist country how could it develop <laughs> and so one paul byro a belgian economist made a thorough study of the economic development of different nations from, from 1750 to 1918 and he came out with a surprising finding that in 1750 if you draw the economic development statistics of the world it would look like this china 32.8% share in global gdp china was the top country in 1750 with 33% of world gdp india second with 25% of world gdp uk one of the last with 1.8% of the world gdp america with 0.1% of world gdp he said this is this is the structure of the world economy in 1750 and india went down from 24.5 in 1750 to 20 in 1900 1800 in 1830 8 in 1880 1.7 in 1900 in just 150 years the indian economy the indian polity the indian society the indian civilization crashed and the same thing happened to china from 33% in 1750 china became 6% in 1900 and in the same period uk and us which had just 2% between them in 1750 their share went up to 41% in 1900 this completely transformed paradigm shifted transferred the power economic power political power cultural power civilizational power from asia to the west when paul byro came up with this theory the west was stunned it is very likely that in the middle of the 19th century the average standard of living in europe was a bit lower than the standard of living of the rest of the people in the world this shook the west the west was always superior how is it that the western researchers have shown that asia was a mighty economic giant and india was an economic giant and so this job was given even london economist noted it in 1990 then angus madison the greatest economic historian ever he was given the responsibility by the oecd countries to test and verify whether paul byrock's research was correct or not it was not a single man's research they instituted what is known as a development studies institute all the 20 countries funded it and he was given a fleet of research scholars to work with and angus madison started his work like this if byrock is right then much more of the backwardness of the third world that is asia presumably has to be explained by colonial exploitation and much less of europe's advantage can be due to scientific precocity continued slow accumulation of wealth and organizational financial superiority you cannot say it happened our growth happened because of this it has to be with colonial exploitation this is how angus madison started the work and said that paul byro cannot be correct and angus madison came out with the final conclusion in the year 2001 until june 2010 angus madison kept on publishing his researches in which he said he drew a 2000 year economic history of the world starting from the first year of the common era called ad he said if you look at the economic statistics in the year 2000 in the year 1 of the common era india tops the world with 34% of world gdp china next in the year 1000 if you draw the economic statistics india still leads with 
28 percent. In the year 1400, India again leads. In the year 1500, India again leads. In the year 1600, China overtakes India. In the year 1700, India overtakes China. And Angus Madison come to the, came to the conclusion that Indian economic crash occurred essentially and wholly because of colonial exploitation.